So as we said before, uh, when we talked about and introduced who's complement, um, although computers have adder circuits, there's no separate circuitry um, for subtractors. So instead, um, adders are used in conjunction with something called the two's complement circuitry um, to perform the subtraction. So in other words, to implement a subtraction, say x minus y, the computer takes the two's complement of y and then adds it to x. The concept of two's complement then um, we're going to take a look at now. So if we take, if we see this here, we've got a, uh, a value that we want to first do a complement on. So to get the two's complement of the binary number, we're going to invert all the bits and then we're going to add a one to the result. So the first step is actually to do a one complement because we're going to take the original value 1001101 and we're going to do a ones complement on it, changing all the ones to zeros, all the zeros to one. And then we're going to add one to the ones complement, which then becomes the twos complement. So all of the rules of addition will apply here in terms of carries, but in this simple example, we won't see that. So we have the value 1001101. Do our ones complement. So now we're at 01100010. And at this point, we're going to add one to the ones complement, and we will get the twos complement. So in this case, we can see that we've got only one place where the one is added, and it affects none of the other values. So we have 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 becomes our twos complement value. Now, if we want to add hex numbers together, for a hex number addition, we're going to start with uh, looking at some rules. If the result is less than 16, we write that digit as the sum for that position. Nothing changes. But if it's greater than 16, just like we do with greater than 10 in decimal, we're going to subtract 16 then to get the digit and carry 1 to the next digit. So let's perform the hex addition of 2, 3, D9 added to 94BE. So in the solution here, you can see we've done the math already. 23D994BE gives us a value of B897. Let's see how that happened. So in the least significant column, 9 and E, E being 14, we're going to add 9 and 14, we get 23. It's greater than 16. So we subtract. 16 from 23, and what we end up with is a 7 with a carry. So you can see in that column we did in fact have a 7. Now the next column has a carry of 1, so that's one unit of, uh, of 16, plus 13, plus 11, and we end up with then a value of 25. 25 is greater than 16, so we subtract 16 from it, and we get a 9 now with a carry. So now you can see 9, 7 in our two least significant places. The next column then, the carry, 1 plus 3 plus 4 gives us an 8. Not bigger than 16, we're good to go. And then finally, in the most significant column, 2 plus 9 gives us a hex B. So our answer then becomes B, 8, 9, seven, dealing with all of the carries and applying the rules for adding hex. What about subtraction of hex numbers? Well, in subtracting two hex numbers, if the second digit is greater than the first, we borrow 16 from the preceding digit. So let's look at an example. 59F, we're going to subtract 2B8 from it. And in doing so, the answer is 2E7. So let's take it apart. We're going to subtract 8 from 15 because we know f is 15. We get a 7. In the next column, we're going to subtract 11, which is b, from 25, which is 9 plus 16, OK? Because we got 16 there. That gives us a value of 14, which we know is a hex e. And then finally, we're going to subtract 2 from 
4, which is 5, 1, which gives us a value of 2. So in hex, our answer then becomes 2, E, 7. The last thing that, uh, that we just want to look at and introduce, because you will um, be seeing it um, throughout, the, uh, throughout the course, uh, is the application of ASCII, the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, um, as a date of 1960. Um, it uses a 7-bit representation uh, to represent each code. In this case, an example, um, A is 100 and then 0001. The lowercase e, a is different, 1100001. Okay, and you can see that from the table we have several representations of, of values in hex, its symbol, i.e. on the keyboard, uh, and what its, um, what its value is. Um, so in this discussion, so far we've looked at uh, the representation of number systems because all the information in the computer must be represented by zeros and ones, binary patterns then are used and assigned to letters and characters. In the 1960s, a standard representation called ASCII was established. In, again, looking at the table, you can see the pattern. Um, all the letters of the English alphabet, both upper and lower case, and many of the control codes in punctuation marks that's on your standard keyboard are also in ASCII. The great advantage to the system is that it's used by most computers so that information can be shared among computers. The ASCII system uses a total of seven bits to represent each code. Okay, and we've taken a look at that already for the uppercase and lowercase a. Often a zero is placed in the most significant bit position to make it an 8-bit code. Okay, and we'll see more, um, we'll see more on that. A complete list of ASCII codes, um, you can find it online, Google it, and you'll see a horrendous table, huge table, that shows all of the ASCII codes. Okay, the idea behind the pattern was a design to allow for the easy manipulation of ASCII data. So that is our quick uh, review um, of the handling of binary, decimal, and hex numbering systems and a quick introduction to the coding systems like ASCII. In the next section we'll do a um, we'll do a uh, review of the digital components um, and how we supply these, how, how we use this in the logic world.